Can you give us a case where you have gone searching for extinct or alive and you were shocked that they were still alive? And how does that work? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so first of all, like, <laughs> like I said, looking for an extinct animal, extinct means gone, right? It means yeah. extinct. Like gone. it means it's not there anymore. So if you've ever like read the lost city of Z or seen that movie on Netflix, you got Percy Fawcett up, you know, he's standing there, he's the adventurer and he's like, standing in front of a room full of stuffy guys in smoking jackets going like, I will find the city. And they're like, you're crazy. You know, that's that's been like my life for many years. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, fast forward to 2018 and we uncover camera footage of an extinct leopard, an animal that hadn't been seen in 25 years. And it shocked the world. Since then, we've had five successes like that. So we've Whoa. literally rewritten natural history five times, my team and I. And, uh, you know, I can narrow it down to that leopard. I can tell you we found a tortoise this year on an active volcano in the Galapagos, which is being called the biggest find in the last hundred years in the wildlife sciences. Was it the Pinta Island tortoise? Very good guess. Um, it was the Fernandina Island tortoise. So ah. the Pinta Island tortoise, you obviously know a little bit about it. You know, yeah. there's a couple of them. They found babies, et cetera. So I found an animal way more rare than that. So one, one individual in history, 114 years ago, was found by the California Academy of Sciences called the Fernandina Island tortoise. So I launched this gnarly expedition, right, literally on the second most active volcano in the world. It, uh, average daily temperatures were 122 degrees because there's heat radiating up out of the ground. The whole thing's lava flow. It's like walking around on like five foot shards of glass because of this jagged lava rock. And we found the second ever specimen of the Fernandina Island tortoise, an animal believed extinct for over 100 years. So if you only found one, though, isn't it going to be extinct? That's a good question. So it's a female. And tortoises have the ability to retain viable sperm within them until they're not under such environmental stress. They literally have a cum belly. They have a cum belly. Yep. Got it. Yep. Yep. They. <laughs> I mean, that is what it is. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. 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 So, so one, she, we, we actually, um, we're hoping now that she's in care that, you know, once she's not under so much environmental stress, she was super underweight and dehydrated. She might, uh, lay some fertile eggs. But since that discovery in February, leaving next month in December is a return trip to try and find a male suitor for her. If we can just find one other, we can bring him back. So, um, you know, That's she's crazy. literally the rarest animal in the world. There's That's one of them, and we found her. So. Wait, what is it called? I want to look at a picture. Fernandina Island tortoise. So how old do you think that she is? Uh, we estimate that she's right up around 100 years old. Holy okay, so shit. She, her parents are probably no longer alive. We can Correct. assume that. But perhaps other offspring from her clutch, yeah. you know. So the way the island works is it's this giant active volcano, right? And it, the whole thing's covered in lava flows, except for these crazy little isolated pockets of vegetation. My guess is where Fern was, at one time there was maybe a dozen tortoises. Lava flew, flowed over it, and it killed all of them except for her in that pocket. So what we got to do is check all of the other little pockets and see if we can bring two together. I got you. Wow. Fun little story. Little Finding them. Yeah, yeah. It's, they, it's they're crazy. It's a crazy animals, looking tortoise. I was, uh, I was in the Galapagos like seven or eight years ago. Uh -huh. I guess it would, it would have been eight, no, seven years ago. Yeah, because nice. I was there uh, the day that Lonesome George died. Well, I was going to go see him the next day. That's brutal. He had been around for what a hundred, anywhere yep. between like a hundred or hundred fifty years. Mm -hmm. The oldest living tortoise that they knew of. Right. At the time. That was a fun story. The last of his species. He died. I, I had an appointment to go meet and hang out with Lonesome George the next day, and he died about he, like ten hours fun. before I got to meet him. Fun, fun little story. Fun little so, story. I'm bad, so I'm bad luck. So the moral is don't bring me so on. So you're not going to visit Fern. That's don't, what we've named don't her. Don't bring yeah. me around tortoises. I'm bad luck. You named her Fern? Yeah, after no, Fernandina. Maybe Island. a little more imagination there. No. Okay. No. Yeah, All very right, little. I'm a scientist. I hey, got no you imagination, found it. You get bro. to decide. Yeah, you found the tortoise. You get to decide. All right, so that's that's crazy. That blows my mind that, like, animals, you can go out and find an animal. Now, do you ever – what's another one that you've brought back or found and, like, everyone thought was done? Well, the Zanzibar leopard, that one I mentioned, I've got a couple others we can talk about, too. But if you look up the Zanzibar leopard, you know – where we were in Zanzibar, this is a super developed, overpopulated island. The national park is like the size of a New York City block, right? Tiny. So this is like an expedition where we're not staying way out in the middle of the bush, you know, a million miles from anything. We're like in hotels and like going into the national park in the day, feeling hopeless, basically had no clues whatsoever. And then on trail camera captured, I'm sure you're seeing it now. Yeah, dude, that guy's, this guy's gnarly captured too. Captured a beautiful yeah. leopard. Yeah. And so that was amazing. And that, that was an interesting one because in Zanzibar, there's so much lore and culture. Mm -hmm. They believe the witch doctors kept leopards as demonic pets that would do evil bidding. So the witch doctor said they were there, but Western science said they weren't. It was like such a juggle. And, uh, yeah, that one was pretty nuts too. It is, it's a very gnarly looking animal. So yeah, you said you keep saying the word beautiful. That would not be the first word I would <laughs> use to describe this animal right now. It looks like a giant 
giant mole rat kind of. Damn. But I guess, are there any animals that you look at and you're like, that animal's gross? No. Nah. Or do you think they're all nah, you I think they're all. all. I look, I mean, everybody's got their thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not into spiders. I don't want to squish them. I don't think they're gross or ugly, but, like, I'm not an arachnid guy. You know, I'm not that spider guy. Like, I don't yeah. want to, like, go pick up tarantulas and stuff. That being said, I'm a huge snake guy. So the, the more venomous, the more deadly the snake, the more I want to play with it. Do you have them as pets? I have a couple at home. Uh, at one time, I had, like, 30. Uh, yeah, you seem like you give off snake vibes, yeah. <laughs> snake guy vibes, which you, you got can't that really creepy. trust. Uh -huh. Have you ever, like, accidentally run over a squirrel with your car? Of course. <laughs> Is that was that heartbreaking? I mean, I didn't break down and cry, but I was like, "Oh, that sucks." <laughs> yeah, you know? it does suck. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no, I like you know, I'm, I'm also what I do pursuing extinct animals is a form of hunting. Right. right. I'm I'm on the hunt constantly, and in my everyday life, like I eat meat. I'm not a vegetarian. You know, I'm I'm very I'm pro animal rights and everything else, but. The meat that I eat, the fish primarily, is all hunted by me. I'm an avid diver and spear fisherman. I go out spear fishing all the time. Yeah, hit me. Could you catch a fish with your hands? Depends on the fish, but yes, I've caught many fish with my hands. How how long did it take you? We have a bet. He Hank, our producer, thinks he can catch a fish with his hands what in Alaska of, during. He gets one day salmon run. Like, yeah. Ooh, he's never done it before. Never done it before. He we're gonna, he gets to go for one day. Not one a, day. Yeah. One day. He's and never even to, to Pike you, Place Market. But you get, <laughs> but you get to go anywhere in Alaska. Pick the stream. He can't go to the one where it's like all the fucking salmon are on that, top of know, each other, where you just basically like the scoop basis them of up. this was I was watching Nat Geo and it was yeah. like showing the bears doing the salmon run, and I was like, I could do that. They just stand in there and they just pick them up. You gonna use like a knife or something? Or no, nope. hands. Hands. hands, hands, no gloves. I'm do not, you think you could? No. Really? No. I mean, I think I could catch a salmon with a tool. You know, like I could build a little funnel trap, or I could make a spear. But you're talking about a real slimy thing. The bears are doing it with claws, right? Mm. They're sticking them. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you can't. I just don't know that I could. Yeah. And they also have the sharp teeth, too, and the big mouths that so, they can catch them with. Now, now, so this now, is case closed. No, no hold on. Time not. out. Jeff Fisher says yes. Jeff Fisher is a native Alaskan and has a house there. He's not, he's not a, a native Alaskan. I don't well, think you know what the word been, native means. If you've been to Alaska, you're native a native Alaskan. He has visited okay, Alaska. True. Well, wait. Let me give this a T.O. because I'll, I'll give you one more tidbit of information that might help you on your quest. Most of the time when the salmon are running up the rivers... They're spawning and dying, and they're running out of energy. They Boom. don't feed when no. they're in the rivers. Yep. No, so you can't get a dead one. You're looking yeah. for a real, like, yeah, end of his lifespan. Yes. Yeah, salmon, and like, Jared barely Patrick. makes no, it up the river. No, no. You just got to knock them down. You can't, right get, you can't get, like, a grandma salmon using a walk with tennis <laughs> no. balls on it. That doesn't yeah. count, Hank. Uh, so you alluded to it a second ago. You said that what you do is essentially hunting. You're a yeah. hunter of sorts. I am. You, it dawned on me you're kind of like a bounty hunter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you look yeah. for we had Dog the Bounty Hunter sitting in that seat earlier. You guys share a lot of similarities. When you find an extinct animal or an allegedly extinct animal and you prove that it still exists, do you get paid for that? Uh no, I don't get paid for it. What I, I, I get rewarded very much in the sense of it unlocks lots and lots of funding for conservation, which is why I do what I do. You know, I'm I'm all for conservation and wildlife preservation. But no, there's no like, you know, here's 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 your money if you find this thing. It doesn't doesn't work that way. In fact, okay. it's the opposite. Like I said, I'm usually the guy getting told he's crazy and there's no way you can do it. And then somehow we managed to pull it out. Huh.